good evening to everybody. Uh, just uh, I would like to express my appreciation to our fans that they came here to support us for one more time. Uh, unfortunately, we don't play the final, but uh, you know, after if we let uh, the first 24 hours, 48, two, three days, uh, and we can realize uh, what we achieved this year. I can be proud for our players, for our club, for everybody, for our coaching staff. It was a really difficult uh, season for us, but one more time we were here in the Final Four. We played one very bad uh, first half versus uh, Real, and it was uh, enough for us to not to compete for the final, uh, for the title today. Uh, of course, you understand that today's game was a very complicated game, I can say. Uh, with more of the players uh, without motivation. We just had to use it uh, just for the people who, was, who stay here for our, for our fans uh, to see us. And of course, as a preparation for the upcoming games. Uh, congratulations to Fener also. They had a, a very a great second round and playoff series versus Monaco. They deserve to be here. I wish them good luck uh, to the upcoming games. Thank you. Thank you, coach. This is right your hand if you have any questions over there. Uh, Catalano Francesco, your devotion. Coach, in the last uh, post game press conference last Friday, you talked about the weight of success, failure, and values. Um, I know there is a, a bit of disappointment now, but can we say that what you built in these years in terms of mentality, culture, is kind of a model now for other EuroLeague teams and is something important that? will be considered and regarded uh, over the result that is something that is important, but it's not all, um, uh, all what is everything about. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yes, I would like to establish one culture to Olympiacos that uh, includes, you know, the unselfish uh, way of thinking, the empathy between the players and, um, you know, the togetherness that we need to have. Uh, something beyond the talent, uh, beyond the you know the, uh, the big uh, budget, probably. And I'm very happy that um, with this situation we have a big hug for from our fans. It's uh, right now all the sold outs that we have during the season. They they won't support even today. You know our fans were disappointed, but a lot of them stay there uh, to you know to cheer for the for the team. Uh, I'm happy for this. Uh, of course, you know, in, in a clubs like big clubs like Olympiacos, always the titles uh, are important. But from my side, you know, to establish this kind of philosophy um, is very important, and you know, it's it's something that I'm proud of. Over there. Coach Andrew Bernuka, fan sided. Um, you know, I wanted to ask. You've been a coach in your league for a long time now. You've had many different teams. Your original Spanulis Olympiacos squads. Your Krasnodar squad with Delaney Randolph, where you didn't really use a conventional center a lot. Your Kimki team around Alexei Shved. Your Olympiacos team last year with Vizenkov. You know, a perimeter score, but different from the ones you coached before. Your team this year with really no, you know, one option and kind of spreading the ball out. How would you describe your kind of on-court basketball philosophy now, and, and how has it changed from when you first started as a EuroLeague coach throughout the years? Yes, it's a good question. My, my philosophy changes uh, every year. First of all, you need to be informed uh, where the basketball goes, what, what in the basketball nowadays needs you know, to be successful. Um, you can uh, look to the market to bring the players that they fit in your system, but at the same time, it's not uh, always uh, uh, possible. The market is really small right now in EuroLeague, with what every, everybody knows in this uh, in this room, what what's happening in NBA, even in the NCAA, where the players are getting money now to play. Uh, so uh, the market in the states right now creates a lot of problems to European market. Uh, that's why if you see players from one team in Euroleague goes to the other and if you have a, a core of uh, good players and you keep them, mostly you are successful. Uh, I believe stability is very important. I think you need to, to have a core of players 
um, like se seven, eight, nine players, and to add someone, two, three, uh, you know, additions every year, if it's possible, and if the market uh, allows that. Uh, my philosophy is always like this, you know, team basketball is important. Playing almost 90 games per season, you cannot base only one, in one star. It's impossible because if you have one star uh, from 90 games, he will, if you, he will be like 40, 45 games, fantastic, amazing, it's great. But uh, in the other 45 games, that means that maybe you can lose them. Uh, I really believe that you need good, good players, the talent is very important, the athletic ability, the, uh, the height is important. But most important thing for me is uh, how one group of players can stick together and play. Um, this is what I'm trying to, to do in every team, no matter the... Because as you said, uh, Lokomotiv was different type of playing only with forwards. Now we have three centers in Olympiacos. Basketball changes, but uh, whatever always is the same is, is that uh, you need to stick together. You need to have good locker room and everybody has to be on the same page. Over there. Thank you. Uh, Alberto Marzagaglia, your devotion. Coach, first of all, congratulations for the great season, the great basketball you played through so many adversities. It was Thank you. maybe Welcome. last year, we talked yesterday, maybe last year you were more beautiful, but this year you looked to be tougher, definitely. And then I'm asking you something that, starting from what I asked yesterday to, to Mr. Bodiroga, because he was involved in this, uh, in this kind of question. We have seen a lot of talent in the next generation, unbelievable talent. Maybe the next generation ever tournament, it was the final today was something really special, but all the games were so good. Uh, in uh, two, three years, let's say maximum four, most of the great players of EuroLeague will retire or will be retiring. It looks like actually we do not have a change for these great players. Uh, but these guys, as you told before, are going to the NCAA making money when they are 17, 18, 19, things like that. What do you see in the future of this competition in terms of quality? The level of, of uh, the competitiveness is going to be the same because right now they are clubs with great organization, you know, brand names, big clubs that, uh, you know, they know how to, to build up teams. As you said, the talent is going, is going every year down. Probably because of, from all those young guys that uh, you saw today in this tournament, uh, the most of them are going to play in the States. I don't know if they're going to play in Kentucky or um, uh, Duke or somewhere else, but um, maybe after one year they're going to play in NBA. Uh, they're going to be a draft. Uh, what I think is that if you have, if a EuroLeague team have one player, has one player with great talent, cannot be the buyout for, for NBA, something like 1.5 million. For them is ridiculous money. So maybe to raise uh, the buyout from a, a European team to NBA or whatever else, uh, is one solution, but honestly, we need to, ma to, to, to make more attractive our product here in Europe, just to, uh, to make sure that not only the good players are, are going to leave. Uh, you remember that the last two MVPs in, uh, in Europe, uh, Vasily Misic and Sasa Vezenkov, left, you know? Over there. Hello, uh, I want to ask you, Kish. Sarunas Chaskevichus and Fenerbahce Beko hakkındaki düşüncelerini sormak istiyorum hoca. Yes, can you? Can you repeat the question? Fenerbahce Beko ve Sarunas Chaskevichus hakkında düşüncelerini sormak istiyorum. Chaskevichus elinde çok deneyimli olmayan bir kadroyla Final Four'a geldi. Bundan sonraki kariyerinde Chaskevichus'u nerede görüyor? Ve Fenerbahce Beko'yu. Listen, Fenerbahce is a great club. It's a very big club with uh, a lot of fans. 
and um, you know, in the in the highest scene of uh, European basketball, uh, Saras is a great coach. There is no doubt about that. I don't know because I didn't talk with him, and of course, if if I, I had the information, I couldn't share with you. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure how many players that he already has. Um, they are fit in the in his system. Probably they're going to make some changes. Uh, but you know, there is no. They have good budget. They have a lot of money to spend. They have a lot of fans. They have great arena and very good coach. I'm sure that they will be competitive also the, the next year. But for this year, being here, always I'm saying that. Achieving the final four is is, is a big time accomplishment. Thank you, coach.